Hello friends, in this video I am going to solve a question from NET 2019 December part C. Now the question is from part C so more than one options can be correct. So the question is let n be a bounded sequence of real numbers. Then uh, we have given four options and we just have to choose uh, the uh, option which is true for the given bounded sequence of real number. So uh, first option is every subsequence of a n is convergent. Second is there is exactly one subsequence of a n which is convergent. Third is there are infinitely many subsequences of a n which are convergent. And fourth is there is a subsequence of a n which is convergent. Now a n is just a bounded sequence of real numbers. So by <coughs> by bolzano weierstrass property, there is a subsequence property. There is a subsequence. of a n which is convergent. So fourth option is correct. Now we cannot say that every subsequence of a n is convergent. Uh, for example you let us take a counter example for one. So take the sequence minus 1 raised to 10 that is you take minus 1 comma 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and so on now see that every sequence is a subsequence of itself so this subsequence this this sequence is a subsequence of the sequence minus 1 raised to n but this subsequence is not convergent because this sequence is divergent sequence because it has two subsequences uh, minus one the subsequence minus one and the sequence constant sequence minus one and constant sequence one which converges to minus one and one so two different limits are there for two different subsequences so this original sequence minus one raised to n does not converge so this this first option is false now there is exactly one subsequence of a n which is convergent so this is also false because it is saying that there is exactly one but we have for this you can take the same example as minus one raised to n and there are two subsequences namely this minus 1 the constant uh, subsequence minus 1 it is minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and so on and constant sequence 1 that is 1 1 1 and so on this two converges to this is con uh, this converge to uh, minus 1 and this converges to plus 1 and see there are two subsequences which are convergent but it is saying that there is exactly one subsequence so this is also false now there are infinitely many subsequences of a n which are convergent now see that if we have by this fourth option if there is so for third uh, let a n be a uh, uh, let a n be a sequence given sequence and from the fourth option there is a subsequence of a n which is convergent and the, because this is given as bounded sequence so by fourth option uh, let us say that there is a subsequence let us denote it by a n1 suffix n uh, suffix 1 is a convergent subsequence because there is a subsequence correct so this is subsequence which is convergent and note that this is bounded so this a n1 must be bounded because the original sequence is bounded. 
now you again apply the bolzano weierstrass property to this subsequence so this subsequence is bounded so it has a convergent subsequence let us denote it by a n2 correct so this is a subsequence which is also convergent and now it is a subsequence of the bounded subsequence so this is also bounded now you again apply a bolzano weierstrass property to a n2 so again it has because it is bounded so it has a convergent subsequence and so on so you will get infinitely many convergent subsequences to this an which is bounded subsequence so the third option is also correct now let us solve another question so the question is let f is defined from 0 1 cross 0 1 to r be a function defined by f of x y is equal to x y upon x square plus y square if either x is non zero or y is non zero and it is equal to zero if x is equal to zero y if it is equal to y so both x and y are zero then the function is zero otherwise it is x y upon x square plus y square now then which of the following statements are true so they have given four statements for the function f so the first is f is continuous at 0 0 so let us see whether it is continuous at 0 0 or not so write the definition of function so the function is f of xy is equal to xy upon x square plus y square if x non zero or y is non zero now uh, see that uh, this function is and f of 0 0 that means when both are zero it is zero so the continuity means what we have to uh, take the limit limit as xy tends to 0 0 of this f of xy must be f of 0 0 correct then we say that this function f of xy is continuous at 0 0 now let us see whether this holds or not now in r2 we have two different uh, we have there are infinitely many paths to re, uh, to reach f of x uh, at 0 uh, 0,0 so as xy tends to 0 we take the path y is equal to mx a straight line path so on this path along this path f of xy is equal to xy upon x square plus y square so you just put y is equal to mx so it is x into mx divided by x square plus mx square so which is equal to m into x square upon x square plus m square into x square you cancel as xy tends to 0 that means it tends to 0 it is not exactly equal to 0 so you can cancel out this x square from numerator and denominator and this this is just x upon 1 plus m square that means as limit along this path limit as x comma mx tends to 0 0 f of x comma mx is equal to m upon 1 plus m square along the path y is equal to mx so now as this m change the value of this function along the path will change because this depends on m so this limit the limit the limiting value is different 
along different paths so this limit does not exist so limit as xy tends to 0 0 of f of xy does not exist and hence as this limit does not exist so it cannot be equal to f of 0 0 and hence this lim uh, this f f of xy is not continuous is not continuous at 0 0 hence this option first is not correct so this is not correct now the second option says that f is a bounded function now we just have to uh, prove that some uh, this uh, function is bounded by some constant so let us see whether we can bound this function by some constant or not so now already the this zero is just bounded because uh, zero is a constant so it is bounded now just we just have to find out whether this quantity is bounded or not so this function is defined on 0 0 1 cross 0 1 that is 0 1 uh, the closed interval 0 1 square so the meaning of this is this x is lies in between 0 and 1 and also y lies in between 0 and 1 that means 0 is less equal x is less equal 1 also 0 less equal y is less equal 1 so this 0 is less equal x square less equal 1 and 0 is less equal y square is less equal 1 now we know that this x minus y the whole square is equal to x square minus 2xy plus y square and now this x and y are real numbers so the square of a real number is always greater or equal 0 hence this is greater or equal 0 now you just simplify it so it is just x square plus y square is greater or equal to xy so this implies xy is less equal x square plus y square divided by 2 correct now this function f of xy is just xy upon x square plus y square now you just use this so it is less equal xy is less equal x square plus y square by 2 and this x square plus y square is as it is so this is just you cancel this x square plus y square so it is just 1 by 2 that means you can bound this by 1 by 2 but you just take the modulus of f of xy so xy upon x square plus y square is less equal half that means this is just mod of f of xy so this implies f of xy is a bounded function correct hence the second option is true. now go for third option so third option says that this integral from 0 to 1 0 to 1 double integral from 0 to 1 f of xy dx dy exist now uh, you just recall one property from the integration that uh, if f is continuous almost everywhere on this uh, on the domain then it is integrable so here the function f of xy is continuous uh, for any xy uh, with x and y both non-zero so this function is integrable because see here this function f of xy is just a quotient of polynomials into variables so for x non-zero or y non-zero this function is continuous correct and this function is just discontinuous at x is equal to 0 which is equal to y 
as we uh, we have from this f is continuous at 0 0 is false that means it is discontinuous at point 0 0 and otherwise it is continuous now this point is just a point from the domain so it has major 0 so this function f of x y is continuous almost everywhere so for the third option f is continuous almost everywhere so this implies f is integrable hence, hence 0 to 1 f of x y the integral exists so this third option is also correct now for the fourth option f is continuous at 1 comma 0 now see here this 1 comma 0 that means this uh, point lies in the first uh, that is either x is non-zero or y is non-zero because here x is 1 that is it is non-zero so and y is 0 so it lies over here so it is the function is x y upon x square plus y square so this function is continuous and hence this f is continuous at 1 comma 0 now let us solve another question from part c so let fx be a polynomial ring in one variable over a field f then which of the following statements are true now for this question you just we just need were the Euclidean domain so Euclidean domain is just a domain with uh, some property with uh, which satisfies the Euclidean function property so Euclidean function here this you just define that Euclidean function I mean you should go through this when on this fx you just take that Euclidean function as degree of fx where this f is a polynomial that is fx belongs to the capital fx then this polynomial ring fx becomes euclidean domain euclidean domain ed so and uh, there is a result that means if the domain is euclidean domain then this is pid the principal ideal domain and the PID is also UFT unique factorization domain so let us see the options the first the third option is fx is Euclidean domain so it is correct because it is a Euclidean domain so it is also PID so second option is also correct as it is PID it is UFT so first option is also correct now the fourth option is fx is PID but not Euclidean domain so this is wrong because it is Euclidean domain so this is wrong now let us solve another question from part C so let I be an ideal of Z where Z is a ring of integers the which of the then which of the following statements are true so the first statement is I is principal ideal uh, now just note that this z this ring is a PID PID principal ideal domain the, uh, that means that is every ideal in z is principal So this statement is correct because i is any ideal of z so i is principal ideal because z is PID. Now i is prime ideal of z. It is not necessarily true because let us take i second option take i as the ideal generated by say 4 then this is not prime ideal in z because 
this 4 is not a prime in z so 4 is not prime in z because 4 is not a prime in z it is not a prime ideal or uh, by definition you just take the product so 2 into 2 is just 4 now this 4 belongs to i but this 2 doesn't belongs to i and by the definition of prime ideal if a if a b belongs to ideal i then a belongs to i or b belongs to i but here 2 does not belongs to i because this ideal i is generated by 4 that is this ideal is just 4 sorry, 4 8 12 and so on right the multiples of 4 uh, okay, and also 0 so this 2 is not in i hence this is not a prime ideal hence this second option is also false is false now the third option says that if i is prime ideal of z then i is maximal ideal in z uh, which is not true because uh, take 0 the ideal 0 so third option you take ideal i is equal to the 0 ideal that is generated by 0 then this is is prime ideal because if you take uh, the product of any two um, numbers or any two elements in zero ideal then it is zero so now this is a prime ideal and clearly it is not maximal in z so this ideal is this zero ideal is prime ideal but it is not maximal hence this third option is also wrong this is the counter example this i is equal to the zero ideal now the fourth option is if i is maximal ideal in z then i is a prime ideal of z so this is true if we have the integral domain then maximal ideal gives prime ideal so uh, maximal ideal is a prime ideal so this is true thank you